Okay, this is our throwing warm-up drill. Go through a few different drills that we use to warm up the quarterbacks. Um, this is done generally uh, pre-practice while the rest of the team may be doing specialists or, or, or other things like that. Okay, we start with uh, throwing on both knees. We go four throws with each. We want to emphasize accuracy. Okay, we want to emphasize shoulder turn, getting the opposite shoulder. So in this case, the left shoulder pointing at our target, and then finishing with our right shoulder pointing at the target. All right, and we want to focus on how many revolutions we can get with the ball. Okay, we don't care how hard we're throwing right now. We're just warming up. We care about. We want to be accurate all the time. So in this case, we talk about aiming at right there we want to hit the face mask there's a good throw right there okay we want to hit the face mask and we want to make the ball spin the left shoulder right shoulder the other thing we want to do is we want to finish okay, either right down the crotch or in the opposite hip we don't want to finish all the way at the ground and okay, we want to finish opposite hip right like that or down the crotch and okay, here's another look at it Okay, right on, you can see the finish through the hip. Left shoulder, right shoulder. Next we go right knee. Okay, so now our right knee's up, the second drill we go to, same type of thing, we want left shoulder, right shoulder. We want to finish at the opposite hip. We want to hit the guy in the face mask. Okay, nice easy throws, still warming up our arms. This also helps us to warm up our hips. Next, we're going to go left, uh, left leg up, okay? Same type of drill. Okay. Should be a little bit easier throw than the last one. We're going four throws of each. Again, accuracy hitting us right in the face mask. So after we get our knee throws, we got our two knees, our right knee up, and then our left knee up. Now we go feet on the... Uh, feet parallel here. You'll see we want to have nice ankle flexion, knee flexion, and hips. We don't want to be standing straight up and down. Okay. Well, again, we want to point our left shoulder right there. and okay. We want to have a tight off hand. Helps have a tight release. And then we want to point our right shoulder at our target. Finish through with the opposite hip or right down the crotch. We want two hands back one hand out, two hands back, one hand out. We, again, we want to focus on revolutions with the ball, not necessarily the speed of the throw. Okay, here we go, now we're going to go after we get four throws of feet parallel. We want feet perpendicular with the throwing arm, so in this case the right foot is up. Okay, So now this one really helps us loosen up our hips and our back. Right? Again, we want to hit the guy in the face mask, so this one's a little low. Okay. We want to point that left shoulder and then point the right shoulder. Point and point. Now on this one, a lot of guys will have a tendency, okay, they'll really be standing straight up and down. You still want to have some flexion, all right? You can see there, he, he's got some bend in his knees. That's important. Again, four throws on each of those. Okay, here's another angle of this, okay? Just get a little bit tighter angle. You can really see him really pointing that left shoulder at it and then following through with the right shoulder there. And now we're going to go to a four to six inch step. Okay, So you can see you, you want to step about four to, you want to be lined up about four to six inches behind the line. Okay, You want that lead step okay, to step right on the line. You want to step just past your target with the toe just slightly open. Okay, and Then you want to finish with the back foot also on the line. So you're in a nice balanced position right there. Okay, again, following through the opposite hip, again, trying to hit him in the face mask. You see here, kind of fall off our throw right there, and sometimes that can be hard to replicate. Okay, so we don't want to fall off our throw, we want to get that foot right back down on the line. So four to six inch step, that step can vary based on how wide your initial uh, alignment is. Now right here we're a little too straight up and down. You can see him actually sink to get in a nice position, but he's a little too straight up and down to start that part of the drill. 
in four throws a piece on this. You can vary it on where you're aiming by having different hand placement. You can have him move his hands around and try to hit the hands instead of always hitting the face mask. Here's a tighter look at it up top, okay? Want a nice tight release. We don't want it, we don't want, the shorter we can make the release, the better, okay? It makes it quicker, makes it easier to duplicate all the time, which really helps accuracy. You can see how he's nice and balanced. Again, we're not trying to fire the ball. This is still a warm-up drill. I want to really focus on accuracy. Next, we're going to get a little throwing on the run. So we're going to run forward and backward. Okay, It's really going to emphasize going at your target on the run. You can get a lot of throws quickly. Again, we want to go four and four. You want to throw going forward, and then you want to backpedal out of it as soon as you catch it. Again, we want to make sure that we get the left shoulder pointed at our target. You want to keep it parallel to the ground. You can kind of see number four over there. His left shoulder is too high, which then makes him really force it back down. So you want to keep it parallel, okay, and come on through. Again, accuracy is going to be a key here. This throws too low. And we want to hit our target right in the face mask again or, or right in between the numbers depending on where the target is for that drill. Okay, here's another look at this drill. Let's see, just focused on, on, on the one guy here coming through. Okay. We want to make sure we're coming right at our target and we don't want to fall off okay, and be off balance. This is, again, we want to come right downhill at our target. Next, we've got hot throws. Really want to concentrate here. We're trying to take a drop. They catch us off guard. They make us hot. We want to try to get, stop our momentum by getting up in the air a little bit there. Okay, throw over the blitzer or over the uh, lineman to our hot throw. And that one's a little low. You want to still hit him in the face mask. Okay, you're going to come down on the throw a little bit, but you want to still hit him in the face mask. You can change which way you throw it, whether you're throwing out, there's a nice throw right there, whether you're throwing it like it's an outbreaking hot route or an in-breaking hot route. Okay, but this one's to the right, you want to do three to the right, you want to do three to the left. Here's another look at this. If you can set up, obviously that's good. This is, this is actually emphasizing not being able to set up. The guy's coming free, okay, through an A or a B gap. Getting up allows us to stop our momentum a little bit better, all right, and lets us make an accurate throw there over the blitzer. Here's a look at it going left. You really got to get the left shoulder open to make this throw. Here's a nice accurate throw. Now again, we're still warming up. We're not totally warm. You want a nice tight release. He's throwing the inside hot route right there opening up that shoulder and getting away from the pressure. Okay, one of the last things we do, we, we do a little throwing on the run. Okay, just like a little five yard out. Want that first step to be back. We'd love to push off a little bit more. Okay, we're just trying to make a nice accurate throw. Okay, you'd like to see him get a little bit more, his hips a little bit more downhill at his target. Here's another look at it. You can see after he throws, he realizes he should be coming downhill at his target. Okay, You want his hips and his shoulders to be coming right where he wants to throw it. Not where the guy is, but right where he wants to throw it, which is obviously in front of him here. And then we do it from the gun as well. When you do it on the gun, we try to get this thing out. We would love to get it out by his third step. All right here he does it on his fifth. We want to keep pushing and see if we can get that thing out on his third step. You can see him coming back downhill a lot better here from the gun than he did from under center. We have one lefty here, so he's really got to get his hips turned. You can see how he's got to really work to get his hips turned going. 
and he, he does a nice job at it because we, we usually just go right. He does a nice job of getting his hips turned and getting his right shoulder pointed right at where he wants to throw and then being able to follow through right at his target. Okay, we finish our, we finish our uh, throwing warm up going at a net. We really want this to be a competitive drill. Okay, you're going to get two throws at each spot. So we throw from the numbers, we throw in between the numbers and the hash, we throw from the hash, in between the two hashes, and so on and so forth. Okay, you get two throws from each spot. Once you miss both, you're out, and that's where you went for the day. And we really want to compete and see who can get farther each day. Okay, so this just show you, you know, you take a three-step drop, hit and throw on the first one. All the rest of them are three hitch and throw. So here's the three hitch and throw. Okay, we're aiming for that center one. We want to end up on the hash so he can start in front of it a little bit, hitch up. Okay, so there's one of his misses. Now he'll go again. He hits it. Now one thing you want to see, you really want to see, you can see a couple things, especially if you tape it from this angle. Right here, what I would talk to this player about is his left foot is really closed, which is really hampering his hips from getting through and being able to use all of his hips. He's also overstriding a little bit. Okay, that's more than a four to six inch uh, step right there. And so everybody will go. You'll go until you're done. Okay, and we really make this a competitive drill. We want to know who's got the farthest every day. Everybody else will do push-ups. All right, we'll do 10 push-ups and they lose. Okay, next is footwork progression. We really want it. We're still warming up here, okay? We've we've stretched. We've done some of those sort of things. We've taken our warm up throws, but now we're, we're still getting our arm ready for the rest of practice, okay? So we want to take one step here, okay? We want to make this throw. Okay? He should be lined up on the outside, on the uh, bottom of the numbers, okay? Right on the line of scrimmage. Okay, we want to make this throw to his upfield shoulder. That's, that, that's a perfect spot for that throw. We'd like to see him get back a little bit faster and a little bit deeper. Okay? We put the guard there because we'll make this throw with the guard pulling sometimes, so we want to emphasize that. There's a lot faster, a lot better job by the guard, really stressing that guy, making him get away from center. Okay. Nice job there. Now all these throws, we'll see some going left, we'll see some going right. We'll go one way, all the way in a row, everyone will go, and then we'll come back and we'll do the right either later that practice or the next day. Okay, here's just a clip of this, uh, uh, doing this in the game with the pulling guard. Okay, so you really got to get some depth, there's the pulling guard. We're able to make an accurate throw, you know, and pick up some easy yards on the outside. But we've got to get away from the line of scrimmage so that guard can have room to pull and we don't get the ball knocked away, or knocked out of our hands and we can still make an accurate throw on time. Obviously, the quicker we get the ball, that guy, the better. Now, after we've done it under center, we're going to go from the shotgun. Same thing. We want to get it out of our hands as fast as possible. This is a pretty nice job right here. Get it out of our hands as fast as possible. We want to hit the guy again in the upfield shoulder. Now, obviously, this is going right. And we were going left. Like I said, we'll go, we'll go the same way, but we'll go under center, everyone will go, right? And then everyone will go um, from shotgun. We want to make sure we get accurate throws. If they don't, they go again. Okay, here's a look at it going left. So, again, a little high, but a pretty nice throw right there. We really, we don't want to, we don't care about the laces or anything like that. We want to see how quick we can get this ball out of our hands and how accurately we can get it there. Here's one more look. Standing a little bit too tall. You can see him actually try to get down there. But this is a nice, accurate throw. That's exactly where we want it. We want it out quick, but that's the shoulder we want that ball on right there. We want, that, we want it to end like that every time. And you can see he's in a nice, balanced position with his feet. Okay, right at his target. He stepped just past where he wanted to throw it. That, 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 if we can end like that every time, we should be very accurate. Okay, now we go to three-step. We're going to work the hitch. So now, still we're going to be bottom of the numbers. 
six yards deep, okay? This is going to our left. Now, to our left on the three-step, we really want to turn the foot. So we'd like to turn the foot so that he can get his hips planted and go in the right direction. The other thing we want to do is we want to plant as much of the foot in the ground as possible. We want to be on the insides of our feet on our drop. Okay, we don't want to be on the outsides of our feet. The insides of our feet are going to allow us to, to be in the most control. We want all the pressure on the insides of our legs. We want to keep our shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. Okay, eyes downfield on the first step, outside on the last two. And then we want it on the outside shoulder again. Really want to drive through the throw, okay, with the foot planted just slightly past where our target is, just like that. And again, we want to finish with our feet right there in a nice balanced position. Get another look at it. You can see this right here is a good spot for the foot. Okay, you can see he's got almost his entire foot in the ground. One thing we don't want to be is we don't want to be on our toes. If you're on your toes, you're not able to control your body very well. You, know, you don't play on your toes in any other position in football. You don't want to play on your toes at quarterback. You want to get your feet in the ground, create as much force coming out as possible so that you can use all the power cleans and squats that guys do nowadays. Okay, that's a nice throw right there. Comes back out in a nice balanced position. Okay, keeps it nice and tight. One thing I will say, we want to eliminate that fall step right there. A lot of guys will do that. If you, we don't like the fall step, to eliminate that fall step, you can have a guy just curl up the toes of that foot. Curl up the toes of that foot, that's a good way to put mental weight on that foot, and it'll help eliminate that fall step. So he'll, here you'll see a fall step. You also see a guy whose feet are pointed to throw at that building off to the right. So look, if you'll notice, he really has to cross over and throw across his body. That's why he does not come down in a position that we're looking for. He comes down in an unbalanced position because of where his foot is pointed. So now he's really having to fight across his body to make this throw. Here's the same kid. Now he's eliminated the false step. Still you can see it right down the hash mark, so he still has to come across and see where he ends up there off balance. He's making a good throw, but it's going to be harder to replicate that because he's off balance every time. It's going to be a little bit different. I like to get that toe and that foot just past his target. And what I mean there is you'd like to have his left foot lined up with that receiver's left foot. Now we go to the gun. Again, from the gun here, we just want to grab the ball, okay, and we want to throw it. So we're not going to take a drop on three step from the gun. So it's a catch and throw. Don't care if we have the laces right here. You can actually see him throwing without the laces. Okay, again, we want the outside shoulder, so this is a nice throw. And we want that ball out quick. Okay, now we're going to go five hit and throw. Okay, so this is like throwing a speed out. The... Uh, person catching the ball will be at 12 yards, 4 yards from the sideline. Okay, What the quarterback wants to do is he wants to take one big, four small. Okay, One big, four small. We really want to get back as fast as humanly possible, throw this ball out on time. Okay, Again, we want to be on the inside part of our feet. Okay, We do not want to hitch on this. It's five hit and the ball's coming out. Okay, so we want to be on the inside portion of our foot. We want to get as much of our foot in the ground as possible, especially on that fourth and fifth step, and drive through the, uh, drive through the ball right at, uh, at our target. There's a nice job right there. You can see a little bit of a false step, still working to eliminate that. But right there, you, know, you want to be basically six yards deep, which he is, okay, that whole foot's in the ground right there, right, it's lining up his hips to make that throw, and he ends in a nice balanced position. Now, same thing is going to apply for the lefty, he wants to make sure that he gets his last step to align his hips to throw this ball. Right there, you can see his last step turns and aligns his hip to throw this ball so that he can go one, two, three, four, five and get this ball out. 
From the gun, we actually want to take one big, two quick. Okay, so now the, we cut off two steps for each one, so if it's a five hit and throw, now it's a three hit and throw from the gun. You can see he's leaning back just a little bit, okay, which makes this ball go high because the elbow drops a little bit. So you'd like to see his shoulder stay a little bit more level, okay, and then drive through the throw as opposed to planting underneath him. Still a pretty good ball there. Okay, you want to leave this ball outside. Okay, here's, an, here's, here's one last one. Does a little bit better job with the foot. You can see the foot trying to turn to tell him that it wants to be opened up. The body's trying to overcorrect it, okay? But he does a nice job of getting the whole foot in the ground so he can really drive through that throw, okay, and make this, make this an accurate pass with good velocity on it. Okay, so now we're gonna go five and a hitch. Okay, so now when we hitch, we wanna make sure, we're still gonna go one, one big and four quick, but we wanna make sure that we hitch. When we hitch, we wanna hitch at our target. Okay, so we wanna use the momentum of our hitch. So right here, okay, we're gonna put the guy catching the ball just at the uh, top of the numbers. When the guy hits the top of his route, he wants to come right back at the quarterback. Right here, you wanna still turn the foot and hitch right at your target. Again, accuracy. A lot of the time, I'll stand behind and I'll yell outside or inside to determine what shoulder I want him to throw on this throw right here. Again, we want to finish in a nice balanced position. Here's another look at it. So you can see him really using his hitch right where he wants to throw it. One more look to the right. It's a nice job right here. Getting the foot turned so that you can hitch right where you're trying to throw it. We just need to get this player's lead shoulder, his left shoulder down a little bit. That's why the ball will sail on him occasionally. So now we're going to go seven, uh, seven steps in a hitch. Okay, so we're going to go one big six quick. Okay. We want our receiver to be 16 yards deep, four yards from the sideline. At the top of the drop on the seventh step, we want him to come straight downhill. We want him to stay four yards from the sideline. The quarterback will pull him outside. He needs to be patient and wait till the quarterback gets to the top of his drop on this. All right? So the depth of the quarterback should be between eight and a half to 10 yards, depending on, this, uh, depending on his size. Again, utilize the hitch. We want this hitch to be right at our target so we can generate momentum on our throw. We still want to finish a nice balanced position. And we still want to have our whole foot in the ground when we hitch. Right here, this player kind of hops for a second there, and that's going to put him on the outside of his feet and make it a little bit harder for him to transition. Now, one thing a lot of guys will have a tendency to do is on these longer throws, they're going to do that. They're going to have that loop in their throw, okay? All right? We really want to emphasize having two hands back, okay, so that we eliminate all loops. All right, this is a uh, pocket presence drill, okay? We have two eligible receivers out there. We have four rushers, just like the four down linemen. Based on the movement of the defensive line, that should tell the quarterback about what, what we want him to do. So instead of just the old drill of having just one guy and, and telling him to step up or, or escape or, or do those sort of things, we have four guys in there to kind of help him get a better feel of where he should be in the pocket. Okay, so we'll give you a bunch of different scenarios right here that you can look at. All right. Well, the first one here, we just got everyone going forward. He just wants to step up, okay? And I, previously, we told him to read to the boundary, so he's just going to step up. He wants to bring that ball. You'd like to see him be a little bit more violent with the ball and bring the ball from the back 
ear to the front ear to protect it on the rush. Steps up. We want him to go to his second read. He can't go to his first read now. All right, his first read would actually be outside, so now he'd come down to his second read. All right, here's another look at it. This, this player will be a little bit more violent with the ball. Okay, but what we don't want is the shoulder to go down to up like that. We'd like to keep it a little bit more level, okay, so they're more, more balanced. Also, we'd like to keep our hips underneath us. And when we get like that, that's how you're going to see guys slipping and falling around in the pocket. Does a nice job with the football. They yeah, bring it from one ear to the next to protect it. You can see him roll that shoulder and protect the ball. We'd like to, uh, just like to see him be a little bit more quiet with his upper body and keep his feet underneath him uh, at the bottom. Okay? You really want to keep, as a quarterback, you really want to keep your feet underneath your hips to keep balance. Okay, here's another look right here. Okay, this time, we told them if, if, if they all rush up the field, that I want them to run. Okay? You can also add a third receiver who's like a back on a check through, you know, right, or check OTB right over the ball here. And on that, you can have him just step up and dump it, not having his feet set. Okay, so find the back one under pressure. This time, he does a better job of really pulling the ball through and then getting it tucked away high and tight and taken off. This drill, we want to teach where you're going to go with the ball when you get pressure. And here you get an example. Now we get one guy coming on the left side, one guy crossing his face, but the outside DN staying up the field. So now he can't escape outside. He needs to just slide his feet and make a throw to the left. Slide his feet, push off. He's on the inside portion of his feet. So we're just going to make a nice little subtle movement, okay? We don't want to panic in the pocket. We want to keep our eyes downfield, which he's doing a nice job here, okay? Step up. Make an accurate throw. Here it is to the right. Little addition you can put to this drill, okay, is now you slid and now you escape. So it's a step up, it's a step to the side, now escape. You have your receiver go with the quarterback. All right, and then you make a throw and then you throw on the run. Okay, next step is to have them both come inside, and now we've got to escape the pocket. Now, what I'd really like to see this quarterback do here is when he gets to the top of his route, I'd like to see him really push off with that left leg and reach with the right leg to get depth. Okay, so we want to get depth first with second. Okay, you got to get away from these guys. They got long arms. Okay. And now he comes downhill throwing the ball. But you'd like to see him get a little bit more push off the inside portion of the left leg okay, and reach with the right leg to get depth first. Now going left, you're going to see that we actually want to spin out. Again, push off the left, but instead of right there, see how he kind of steps underneath him? Again, you want to get depth first. This player is trying to get depth and width at the same time. You really want to get depth first, then width, spin out, and then we make an accurate throw down the field. Okay, now to keep him honest, we'll give him a play and then we won't rush anybody and he just needs to, you know, he's five hit and throw here on the outside. Reset to your second read. They okay, reading this thing outside in, he resets to a second read and goes there. So we want to keep them honest, make sure they're taking a legitimate drop at all times. All right, so here's, a, here's an example of a couple of uh, instances of this. This one is stepping up in the pocket and bringing it through. See how he protects the ball right there? Protects the ball, steps up, all right, and takes off. Love to see the ball on the outside arm. In this case, you know, Really would like to see it in the outside arm there, but it is a nice job of really stepping up and protecting the ball there, and then being definitive and taking off. Takes a sack, makes it a five or six yard gain. Okay, here you see where he actually steps up and then escapes. Now I'd like to see on the step up him be lower and take the ball underneath this defender. You'll see him, he actually takes the ball over, which we do not want, okay? But he does keep two hands on it. He's trying to get away. 
He steps up and now he escapes, eyes downfield. Again, able to take a four yard loss, make it a four or five yard gain. 